Hey everyone, what's up? This is Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some tips, tricks, and tweaks or modifications uh, if you have some type of back butt or sciatic problem that's affecting your sleep. Specifically, this video is going to be perfect for you if you are a back or belly sleeper. If you're a side sleeper, I've created another video on that. You can uh, check it. I'll link it at the end or put it in the description. That being said, we're going to talk about the role of surface, your mattress on your symptoms. We're also going to talk about different positional tweaks and some other strategies that I've picked up along the way as I've worked with over 10,000 people dealing with back butter sciatica problems. This is my exclusive specialty. So I'll pass along those tips for you again to improve your sleep quality. Why does this matter? There's a very clear correlation in the evidence and the research between the quality of your sleep and how well you heal. So if anybody comes to me and they say they have trouble sleeping, that's the first thing that we're going to try to improve. So stick around for this entire video. And the intent, again, is to lay out some experiments that you at home can try on. And then let me know in the comments what makes you feel sane, better, or worse. Let's dive into it. Oh, and real quick, if you'd like to identify the most likely source of your back butter cytokine problem, created a better than an MRI DIY diagnostic guide. You can just download that above. All right, so when it comes to back and belly sleeping, if you have some type of back butter cytokine problem, the first natural step for most people is to try to change positions. You get all these ads and uh, you see all these different uh, you know, pillows and wedges and things like that. We'll talk about that here in a second, but it's possible you might not actually have to change your position. You might just have to change the surface that you're sleeping on. When I say surface, well, what is a mattress? A mattress is a surface. And so what I recommend is that you start to play with the surface, manipulate the surface as an independent variable instead of going right to changes of positions. Because, I mean, let's be honest, at night, if you do try to change some of the positions uh, that you're sleeping in, you might notice that you wake up and you have all the intentions of being in a certain position you're laying there like you're not alive. Um, but you wake up and she's alive. Uh, and the pillow fell off the side or uh, you're you're very rarely probably just staying like this all night. Okay. And so positions are actually the last thing I recommend people change. So let's start with surface. All right. And you may have noticed that we're laying on an air mattress. Right. And that's actually a hack. Uh, because uh, maybe you don't have a really expensive bed that you can change the firmness or the softness, something like that. So then you find yourself bopping around to different beds in your house, hoping you have something either really firm or really soft uh, on either ends of the spectrum. Right? So uh, one thing maybe to consider is if you have an air mattress uh, that's easily changeable, then you can start neutral, right? Probably maybe you have a medium firmness, let's just say, of your bed. But then you can make it much firmer by blowing it up, or you can let more air out uh, to make it much softer, right? So we're going to start by manipulating the surface. All right, so what I would recommend is, let's just call your current sleeping surface as somewhere in the middle. What I would recommend is that you spend a night or try out at least a couple hours um, on a much firmer surface. Now, the firmest surface you could probably get is sleeping on the floor. So you could take like a yoga mat or like a camping mat or something and try the floor for a night or so and see what happens. And again, there's only three responses to a change in surface, same, better, or worse. So you could try the floor or what you could do is you could blow this up and make it much firmer. All right, so going up, you make it as firm as you can without popping the mattress, all right? But the time when this might be valuable, and the reason I say might be valuable is because it simply just comes down to testing, but I wanna give you some logic behind it. Let's just say you're a back sleeper and uh, you have pain, numbness, tingling when you're sleeping. Uh, making the surface more firm moves you into more of an extended position versus if the surface is super soft, so the opposite again of firm is really soft, make it soft, let the air out, you can see what's happening to her belly. Now look, I like to live on the extremes, right? So black and white, and it creates context, it creates contrast, right? And so you can see contrasting results if you manipulate these extremes. And so notice when I shift it from hard to soft, what happened is, she went into a little bit more of like a banana position, all right? A sag, a hammock position. And so if one of her yucky motions is in the forward direction, meaning she has pain bending forward or rounding her back, either from above, or let's just say she has a yucky leg raise, or she has a yucky knee to chest, all of these things put her lower back in a rounded position. And you might find if that's a sensitive position for you or a yucky motion that a soft surface makes you worse. 
Now, the reason I say may is because it comes down to testing. So maybe you don't have to think this much into it. I just want to expose the logic of why it might make sense that you don't prefer a soft surface if you're a back sleeper and you have trouble. Um, but maybe this would work for you and this would be valuable for you if your yucky motion was a back bend, right? So you can imagine if she was sensitive to this motion in some way, shape, or form, either from below, kicking her legs back, or bending backwards, arching her back made her worse, then she might actually find a lot of comfort in this. Because again, when we blow this up, it takes her out of the sag and she goes more into the arch. Again, if that's a yucky motion for you, you might find that a firm so surface makes you feel worse. And oftentimes what you'll see, and we'll talk about this when we talk about positions here in a moment, is that if you have some tightness in the front of your hips, when your legs are completely straight, if the surface is too firm, you'll see that it sort of pulls you into a tilt because your legs are straight and you've got tension through the front of your hips, your hip flexors connect to your spine, you'll see it'll pull you into this anterior pelvic tilt. How can we eliminate that? Well, in a moment, we can play around with some things underneath your knees, underneath your ankles, stuff like that. Uh, but also, we could just do this. Take some of the tension, reduces the pull off the front of the hips, and puts you more into a neutral position. So something to try. All right, so now you can imagine, if you're a belly sleeper, that if the surface is super soft, what happens to her lower back? She's going into a back bend. <laughs> and so if she has a yucky back bend and she's sensitive to what we call extension or that arched back or anterior pelvic tilt position, then this is going to place her in it. And that yucky motion is gonna show up uh, in her sleeping position, especially if the surface is too soft. But if we blow it back up, what happens is we start to remove that arch in her lower back, takes her out of that anterior or forward tilt, it removes the arch and makes her spine more neutral. And so she might find that this is more favorable for her. She might like a more firm position. And vice versa could also be said. And so at the end of the day, it's not that a soft surface or a hard surface uh, on the floor or on a very firm air mattress uh, is good or bad. It's just that you need to do the detective work to identify what works best for you. So test a night on the hard floor or a very firm, again, air mattress allows you to make something very firm and very soft and somewhere in between. Uh, and then try soft surface and compare and contrast black versus white. Create that contrast in your results to see if it makes you feel same, better, or worse. Because if, for example, changing the surface, it doesn't matter if you sleep on a soft surface, it doesn't matter if you sleep on a hard surface, uh, and symptoms are just same, whether it's hard, medium, or soft, uh, then what that tells you is that that variable manipulated to the extremes of hard and soft uh, does not matter. And so you going out and buying a new mattress, regardless of what it is, will not help you. But if sleeping on, say, a hard surface makes you feel better and sleeping on a soft surface makes you feel worse, then that creates some contrast. And it tells you not only that that variable does matter for you, but it tells you that if you do go mattress shopping and you choose to do that, that you may want to go for more of a firm surface than a soft surface, again, or vice versa, depending upon your results of this test. All right, so let's dive into positional tweaks. So surface first, right? You can control that whether you're awake or not. You can set yourself up with those tests. Now let's dive into positional changes um, and talk about what they might look like. So back sleeping first. Here you are, you're laying on your back. What are some things you could do that maybe you haven't thought of? All right, well, first thing you could do uh, is you could try putting a pillow, a very small pillow or thin pillow. Uh, sometimes even those little bolster pillows work okay. Uh, or maybe a towel roll, like take like a beach towel or a big uh, bath towel or something like that, and place it behind your lower back. Now, why would we want to do this though? Let's talk about the logic behind this. Many people who sleep on their back, uh, they don't like this kind of slouched or saggy position, especially if the mattress is old and you notice that you sleep in the same spot every single time. Uh, the mattress gets sort of worn out and you fall into that rounded back position. Again, it's not good nor bad, but that's one possibility. And so by doing this, can you lift on up, please? And placing it in the small of your back, what you'll see is that it sort of dumps you, you can see if we exaggerate, this pillow is actually probably a little bit too big, but it dumps her into this anterior tilt. 
All right, so it throws her more into an arched back position. Now, again, if you're somebody who hates forward bending and lifting and these forward motions rounding your back, then this might be something that helps you. Try it out regardless because you never know and sometimes stuff just helps and you can't explain why, right? So test it out for yourself, but that might help you connect the dots and understand why, wow, this really is valuable. And it's because my yucky motion is going forward and when I do this, it places me more in a backwards position, an arch back position. All right, so that's one tweak that you can try. Uh, again, a pillow, small bolster, something like that. Now, the only trouble or problem with this tweak is that uh, it's awkward to sleep like this all night in the sense that this pillow is, like, it doesn't allow you to move, right? If you roll over a little bit, like, the pillow just repositions itself, it falls out or something like that, all right? Uh, so what you could do is this. Thank you. <laughs> all right, now stand on up. Stand up. Yep. So find a thin... Um, you can, if you can go over there, find a thin uh, blanket or a thin bed sheet, fold it in half like so, fold it in half again, hot dog style. Hot dog style. Now, I'm going this way. Okay. Now, this is about the thickness of most people's trunk. All right. So you can go thinner if you want, but this is probably like, I don't know, 13 and a half inches, something like that. All right. And then what you're going to do is this. So now I'm going to grab this. All right. Now stand on up. Okay. Now, can you wrap this? And can you tie it in the front? Yes. Yeah. All right. Snug it up. Tie it nice and tight. Now, again, the thinner the sheet, the easier it is to tie. Even if you just do that, it's probably fine. Good. Okay. Now, I know it looks, like, ridiculous, all right? <laughs> but if you lay on down, what's cool about this is that it doesn't fall off usually. All right, um, and so you can roll over and then you still have it on your side. You can roll this way, right? You pretty much do whatever you want versus the pillow or the other little bolster. It ends up on the side of your bed, all right? So try this, little bed sheet um, may help. And then, right, uh, even when you lie down, you can, you can cinch it up a little bit more. So go ahead and you tighten up a little bit more. Perfect, all right, so try that. Same concept, I'm just giving you a little bit of a tip or a trick. Oh, the final, last little tip is that Maybe you don't like that. Maybe you don't like this little pillow. Um, you could roll something up, put some, say, uh, painter's tape or something like that, and then put it underneath your fitted sheet. That's smart because it holds it in place. Something to consider. All right. Now, we're moving from this downstream to the legs. All right. So what you could do is you could take a pillow and you could put it underneath your knees. Now I'm putting under both knees here, but again, what this does, we talked about the surface changes, you can kind of accomplish something very similar here. When you bend your knees up, what happens to your lower back the more you bend your knees up? Does it flatten or does it go more into an arch? It flattens. It flattens. Good. So if, again, you're sensitive to this arch back position, well, when you put something underneath your knees, you take some tension off the hip flexors and just the system in general, and you allow your back to have a little bit less of an arch in it versus if your legs are here then you tend to flop a little bit more into an arch, all right? So try a pillow under both knees. Same, better, worse. You should be watching this, writing down these tweaks, and then just saying same, better, worse. Just circle one for you so you can do the detective work and then let me know if you need more help, all right? Now, you could just do, if you have a one-sided problem, you might just need the pillow under one leg, all right? If you, you could do the other leg. And so try this, right versus left side. Now, maybe you're like, you know what? That doesn't work either. All right, so another thing you could do, so we talked about kind of treating centrally. We talked about going downstream a little bit to the, uh, to the knees. One other thing we could do is uh, we could play with above, go upstream. And so what's interesting, and maybe if you're watching this, you've experienced this, is that a lot of people have sensitivity to bringing their chin to their chest. All right, so when you bring your chin to your chest, ugh, not only is it hard to do and kind of awkward, but it pulls upwards actually all the way down to your spine. So if you've noticed that when you look down or when you move your head in certain positions, uh, that it increases some of the tension in your back, butt, or leg, you would be normal because the nervous system is uh, continuous and all connected. And so something you can do is, this is kind of a fat pillow. So maybe you try like no pillow or something very thin, maybe like this, or maybe like a towel, or maybe nothing. Right? And so I would play around with less pillow, and then I would play around with maybe more pillow. So let's do this. Oh, something like that. Now, again, neither is good nor bad. It all depends on what motions you're sensitive to. 
Some people might find relief like this because it puts their back in a little bit more of a rounded position. If you have more nerve tension, numbness and tingling your legs, sciatica, this might make you worse because it starts to actually lengthen and put tension on the nervous system, which reduces blood supply and oxygen while you sleep. And so these tweaks for sleeping are designed to help you avoid the yuckiness of putting yourself in certain positions um, that increase your symptoms. All right. A final tweak, and you'll probably recognize that we could go on and on with these forever, right? But these are just some of the things that I would ask that you try, is that you place yourself in a little bit of like a figure four position. So you put your leg up here, and you just let your leg fall out, right? So this is sort of like a frog leg position. And the reason why sometimes this is helpful for people, especially with back, butt, and sciatica pain, is that again, the more stretched out your leg is, generally the more tension you have throughout the nervous system versus if you tuck it under, you bend the leg and you reduce tension on the sciatic nerve. But sometimes people don't like this and sometimes people do like this. So try it on one side, let it straight, and try it on the other side. And by the way, let's just say you have pain, numbness, tingling in your right leg. It doesn't mean that you should just try putting the pillow under the right leg and just moving the right leg in a certain position. Sometimes moving the left leg or the good leg, the opposite leg of your symptoms, can relieve tension throughout the system. And so as much as you might say, well, that doesn't really make sense, who cares? Try it on, test it, and find what works best for you. The other reason that it may also work is because when you get in that figure four position, uh, so you're in that position now, it actually slackens the tissue on the back side of the body, right? Versus uh, most people with sciatic nerve irritation, straighten the leg out, are so used to lengthening the tissue in that area. And doing this brings it closer together, it slackens it, and reduces some of the tension. All right, so if you're a belly sleeper and you wanna try in some different tweaks to find more comfort, uh, it's very possible that you're a belly sleeper, your back falls into a little bit of a sway or a sag, uh, and again, maybe bending backwards is a yucky motion. So how can we remove some of that backwards motion? We can stuff a pillow, again, a towel roll, or you can tie that blanket or um, bed sheet around your waist and it can provide a little bit of a buffer there so it puts you uh, a little bit more in a neutral position in your back so try that on the other thing you can do is you can like so take a pillow and put it under well we'll start with both that's fine put it under both of your shins or your ankles now just be careful again if your back is sensitive to too much arch depending on how big this pillow is watch what happens to her lower back or if she bends this, you can't really see, but bend them both. She'll tend to actually go more into an arch. So be careful with that. Again, just try it on. As always, if you have a one-sided problem, sometimes just one leg. Maybe try the other leg. Let it off. You can also do the same thing we did on your back. Go into a little bit of a figure four. So figure four slackens that area. Try it on the other side. Figure four slackens that area. But what it could do is if the figure four, putting on your socks, your shoes, things like that is a yucky motion, this could make you worse. If twisting to the right or to the left is a yucky motion, this could make you worse. Why? Notice what happened to her body. So she's here, she's pretty flat. If she puts up her leg, she has to twist. She, she, she could be placing herself into a yucky twist. So it's neither good nor bad, try it on. Figure four right, figure four left, see what happens. One final tweak is that you can just take away the pillows. So we talked about underneath the pelvis, underneath the shins, and then we went above, right? Just like we did on our back, the same concepts apply. And if you remove the pillow again, it reduces the arch and lower back. Now, one final thing, just kind of concept you can apply to any of these positional tweaks is if you find, say, that uh, one pillow underneath your pelvis, put it under the pelvis again, and put it on your head so we don't change too many variables, is helpful then that should give you some indication that something about removing that arch in your lower back seems to be valuable. So why not try two pillows? Try that. So on and so forth. And so what's really cool about doing this detective work is that, again, if you identify even just a 5% change, because you move towards a little bit more of a harder surface or a softer surface, then go more in that direction. If one pillow helps you, try two. If two pillow helps you helps you even more, try three. And obviously this could get pretty ridiculous because at some point you only have so many pillows, but I think you get the concept is you get a sense for what helps you and then you can 
turn the dial up on that intensity or on how far you're kind of moving into that tweak and how much you're utilizing it to gain more clarity and more relief. Along the same lines of a pillow underneath the knees, this is just a more extreme version. And some people find this really comfortable. Uh, some people don't, right? So give it a try. It might be awkward to sleep like this for a whole night, but if it allows you to sleep for a few more hours, then that's a win, right? Because you can multiply improved sleep uh, night over night. So this would be like a 90-90 position, 90 degrees almost at the hips, 90 degrees at the knees. So give this tweak a try and let me know if it helps. Another tweak takes you outside of the bed, um, if you're so lucky to have one of these ancient recliners, uh, is to try sleeping in a recliner, right? Kick your legs up. Uh, you could say, well, what's different? Uh, just a different thing to try, right? So some people, especially in their really acute symptoms, just find that the recliner kind of boxes them in, maybe keeps them from moving in certain positions and just feels more comfortable. Now, generally, this is more of a soft surface. Um, and sometimes people, especially if they have sciatica, well, one of the yucky motions uh, for people with sciatica is a yucky leg raise because it puts stretch to the sciatic nerve. So as you can see here, the more you sit up, the more it creaks and everything. The more it brings you to that kind of acute trunk position into a leg raise position. So uh, try opening up that trunk hip angle, going back, trying somewhere in the middle and see if you can find comfort like this. Now, now if you can go all the way back, so this is obviously for the back sleeper, you could, although the recliner would really have to go back, I've seen a couple people prefer this, but not many, um, is you could actually try belly sleeping in this position. All right? Now, it might seem completely crazy. Maybe you have to buffer some of the arch in your back with a pillow under there, but can you roll over? Let try let's try it. And let's hope the whole thing don't go that way. <laughs> All right, now, you might not make it till the morning because <laughs> your face is completely stuffed in the recliner. But maybe you build this up with a pillar or two underneath the pelvis. Um, but maybe this is something, in extreme case, to give a try. Probably don't try that, actually. I mean, you could. But this is actually the story behind how uh, Robin McKenzie discovered the McKenzie method. Oh, really? Did you know that? No. All right, so the idea was, the story is, is that um, somebody, he left somebody on a plinth, like on their belly, propped up. Oh, yeah. Remember how I used to lift people up? Yes into extension they'd be really arch back uh and then he came back and he was like oh no I forgot you left yeah and then they're like my leg's all better though and so he saw this centralization mm. centralization phenomenon sort of occur by accident which mm. then led him to explore these kind of extremes of motion mm. all right so might not be right for you but something to consider especially if you love bending backwards how could you work more of that bending backwards motion into your life well, maybe it's a softer surface, so you sway into it a little bit. Maybe it's laying like this on a recliner in the extreme. Probably not, but maybe. And so these are just things to think about. You want to be thinking as you go throughout this, and hopefully you can tell I'm trying to connect the dots. I'm trying to help you understand, well, why maybe would I prefer that over this? It all depends on what you're sensitive to. If you hate bending forward, uh, then you might not like this. This puts you more in a bent forward position. If you uh, love bending backwards, uh, then you might prefer on the belly. You might prefer a soft surface because you get more sway like we talked about. Um, you might prefer laying on your back with a pillow underneath your lower back because it puts you more in an arch. And that's the idea, right? One of the most obvious things that we didn't talk about but is not maybe optimal because the last thing we want to do is just try to change a habit that's been ingrained for so many years uh, a lot of times people uh, have been sleeping in a certain position for a long time. Uh, but you could just say, hey, if back sleeping is really problematic, where are you going? <laughs> it's standing up. Okay. You could just... <laughs> You're distracting me. Sorry. It's all right. Sit down. <laughs> if back sleeping... Uh, it, being a back sleeper is something that's just plaguing you at the moment, uh, then you could just try to become a belly sleeper, for example, or a side sleeper. And you could try to break that habit. Maybe sleeping in a recliner prevents you and breaks your habit of sleeping on the belly because it's so darn uncomfortable. And it boxes you in so you can't roll and you can't do things. You're kind of glued to sleeping in your back and helps retrain you into back sleeping. So that is possible. I put that at, as a very last recommendation because, well, most people, if you say, hey, just don't sleep like that, um, that's pretty difficult. But 
if you can find a way to retrain yourself, it is an option. So if you're a back sleeper and you're like, hey, I've tried all these tweaks, it just doesn't work. Maybe you need to just stop sleeping on your back for a little bit. And maybe you need to retrain yourself to sleep in another position. Uh, if you're a belly sleeper, maybe you just need to stop sleeping on your belly for a while and find another position, all right? But if you've ever been told that sleeping on your belly is bad for you or you shouldn't sleep like this or soft mattresses are good or bad, um, none of that stands anymore because uh, what works for you might not work for someone else. And so these are all the different elements that we want to consider as it relates to if you have some type of back butt or sciatic problem, you have trouble back sleeping or belly sleeping, uh, you are definitely going to want to um, try out some of these positions, find what works for you and your specific needs versus relying on what somebody else says or thinks or feels, right? So hopefully this is helpful. Oh, and by the way, this video focused almost entirely on physical tweaks, uh, moving your body in different ways, like changing your physical structure to find ways that your body just prefers and which reduce symptoms. Uh, but at the end of the day, I understand that pain is also more than just a body problem. So uh, you have this brain involved, uh, and uh, if you didn't have the brain, you wouldn't be able to experience pain. So we have to consider that. And so it's quite possible you go through all these tweaks and you say, you know what, they just don't work. It doesn't matter how I change my sleep. It doesn't matter if I change the surface, hard, medium, soft, air mattress, no air mattress. It doesn't matter if I have this fancy recliner, if I put my pillows like this or that. And if you have back butter sciatic problems and you've been led to believe that it's some problem with the body, then you should be able to move the body or manipulate one of the variables as it relates to the position of the body and find some type of change for same, better, or worse. The cool thing is that if things make you feel worse, well, the opposite of worse is better, so you can probably find what makes you feel better. You just need to do more detective work. Uh, and if you find something that makes you feel better, awesome. But um, if you have a physical problem, these tweaks should have some impact on you. Again, for same, better, or worse. Um, if they don't, no matter what you do, it doesn't matter, then it's possible maybe your symptoms are not due to a physical problem, at least maybe the one that you've been led to believe, a disc problem, stenosis, um, degeneration, SI joint problem, piriformis syndrome problem. These are all common problems we work with. And it's possible that your brain could actually be making a bit of a mistake and uh, has started to associate sleep uh, or other positions, activities, and movements with pain. And your body might actually be pretty well structurally sound, uh, but your brain could be stuck in a state of fight or flight, keeping you on high alert and actually generating these pain signals, all right? Uh, and so maybe if you notice yourself fearful, worried, expecting to have pain when you go to bed, uh, you try some type of brain dump before you go to bed. Uh, if you're somebody who lays in bed and has a million different thoughts um, and you start to say, oh my gosh, this is going to be another night. I need to get some good sleep because if I don't get good sleep, then tomorrow I'm not going to be able to function. And you start to kind of like have this um, like cat chasing its tail type of conversation that's just very cyclical and not productive, uh, then maybe make a brain dump. Plan tomorrow, uh, today, meaning go ahead and write down everything you need to do tomorrow so you're not laying in bed thinking about it. A to-do list or any thoughts. Maybe you do like more expressive or creative writing, we call it, where uh, it could be related to your pain. It could be any frustrations, fears, worries, concerns, anything that comes up in life. And you just jot it down on a piece of paper and then you tear it up and throw it away before you go to bed. A lot of times that's really helpful. It's going to stop that monkey mind, if you will. Um, another strategy which might impact the psychology uh, of things is to uh, just change uh, overall environments. Now, that could also change, yes, the surface you're on or the position you're just kind of uh, you know, habitually in, but uh, it can also sort of change the association of danger. Uh, so maybe you uh, sleep right next to your office, right? And you're worried the next day you're going to wake up to a, a pile of work or an email from your boss or something like that. Well, try sleeping somewhere else. Maybe you're watching this and you notice that, hey, when I fall asleep in the mountains and when I'm on vacation or I'm at the beach or I'm somewhere I want to be, uh, you know, I have the crummiest bed, but I sleep amazing and I have much less pain. It's not a physical problem, or at least that's one clue that doesn't point to it being a physical problem. Instead, it tells you, hey, when you're preoccupied by something else or you're in a state of more uh, sort of just uh, joy and, and um, I don't know, in a place that you uh, enjoy and are having fun, uh, and the stress levels are down, then your symptoms go down. And again, so that's a clue that, hey, maybe it doesn't matter the bed or the position I'm sleeping in. Maybe it has to do with more of my psychology and the fight or flight state of my nervous system. So changing positions can start to lower that stress potentially, find a place in your bed, uh, not in your bed, find a place uh, you know, uh, in your house 
uh, another room or uh, maybe again, uh, try it out. Maybe you get an Airbnb for the weekend or you go somewhere and you see, hey, I wonder what will happen here, all right? Try not to overthink it, but again, just changing sort of the environment in general can be helpful. One last little tip that's helpful for some people is uh, putting in like earplugs when you sleep. So we sleep uh, next to a very busy road. We're in a house, we're not sleeping next to the road, all right? But we do sleep on the floor, right? Um, and so one thing that's helpful is, uh, you know, instead of being woken up uh, multiple times a night by sirens and by loud motorcycles um, and all the other noises, um, you can put in earplugs, right? And it kind of drowns that out a little bit and just stops the disruption of sleep. Uh, and sometimes that's useful for folks. So having some type of white noise or just plugging in uh, to something that can kind of shut you off from the rest of the world is helpful. Uh, also, we got a lot of like lights that shine in our house, um, sirens again. So we've been laying in bed and like we see like red and blue. It's like, oh, it's the neighbors again. All right. Uh, or there's some emergency. And so that's kind of disruptive. So maybe you try uh, more like blackout blinds or um, maybe you're somebody who's like the opposite and you do best if it's a little bit more light, right? I don't know what the science says about that, but I think uh, when it comes to sleep, generally like a cooler room, temperature might be something, uh, and a darker room um, just allows people to, to sleep more soundly, all right? So just some other little tips that are sort of off the cuff, uh, but I think um, I want to throw those in there because this talks more to the psychology side of pain than it does the physical side of pain, all right? How long do you run a test for to, before you see if it, like, should do you need to run the test for like several nights in a row or is it just like a one night or a couple hours? Uh, well, I think that you can run these positional tests um, multiple in a night mm. because you can be laying there, especially if you have symptoms, you can be laying there uh, and you can try the pill underneath the knees. Okay? Lay there for a few minutes, same, better, worse. Then you can go and you can put the pillows underneath your say ankles. Then you can go 90-90. Then you can go here or there. So I think that you can run these tests, at least the positional ones, multiple in a night. Um, potentially, you could run the surface one as well, especially if you have a bed like an air mattress or something like that. Nothing wrong with sleeping on an air mattress. I slept on an air mattress for most of my life. Um, and they're actually pretty comfy, but you can very quickly change the surface. Um, but I'd say probably more like one night on the floor, unless you wake up in the middle of the night and it's very clear that you're like, oh, I cannot do that. Um, so at least one night with the surface changes probably makes more sense. Um, oh, one thing I did want to mention again on the brain psychology side of things is, um, something you can do even as you're lying in bed or before you go to bed, it's probably maybe another video, but let's just say you're lying there in bed and you start to notice symptoms. The first thing that people want to do is they just want to try to tweak their position. So they grab for the pillow, they're searching for the wedge. Um, they're changing mattresses. They're just kind of like doing all kinds of stuff, like throwing lots of stuff, um, throwing the whole kitchen sink at it. Uh, but why is it possible that your reaction to the pain is actually what's keeping the pain alive? And so as you're laying there in bed, a lot of people notice the symptoms will actually get worse at night because all of the distraction and the preoccupation of the day, all the noise, all I got to do this, I got to do that is gone. And so you lay there at night and it's just like crickets. And your brain's just going wild because it's addicted to the preoccupation. If pain is a great preoccupier or protector, um, well, when you remove some of the other things that might distract you, there's more attention, there's more bandwidth for you to focus on your symptoms at night. And so you may just want to do a little bit of like, we'll call it like a body scan. It's like a somatic practice where you could lay there at night, you could feel some of the symptoms in your back, butt, or leg. And instead of, if they're tolerable, if they're tolerable, you could do this. Instead of wiggling around or trying to get rid of them and using these tweaks as weapons to fight off your symptoms, I want you to use them as tools, as strategies to help you. But if you're using them from a place of fear and worry and concern to get rid of stuff, then you could be reinforcing it. These tweaks could actually make you worse, all right? So instead, lay there. And if symptoms are a, a one, a two, a three, a four, and they're tolerable, just notice the symptoms for what they are. Right? Look the lion square in its face. You don't have to run from it per se because it's possible that, again, the reaction to your symptoms, the fear, the frustration, the worry, the trying to fight with it, fix it, figure it out, um, is actually part of the problem. And so what if you were to try just laying there one night and watching the symptoms and kind of just describing them and observing them maybe as something that's familiar and non-threatening? So maybe if you have some twinkles up and down your legs, some numbness and tingling, maybe you kind of view them and sit back like you would watching the fireworks, right? Or maybe uh, the symptoms that go up and down your leg are 
uh, like a school of fish that are swimming about. Um, maybe if your symptoms kind of are drifting and shifting about, um, maybe they're like balloons, you know, that you've probably seen somebody walk across the street and, you know, the kid dr lets one go and then it's like, woo, right? And it's kind of dancing. So just observe the symptoms. And then obviously, if they get too intolerable, then go ahead and apply these tweaks um, and, because they're really avoidance strategies. But avoidance taken too far can actually reinforce that your symptoms are dangerous. And so again, if you try all these tweaks and you're getting more frustrated, it's possible you're getting more frustrated because you're living from a place of fear and running from your symptoms and trying to fix them is actually making you worse. It's actually making you focus more on your symptoms. It puts you more in a problem solving mode and it's freaking you out. All right, so hopefully these tips, tweaks, and strategies for you if you're a back or belly sleep and are dealing with some type of back or sciatica pain uh, were helpful and hopefully it laid the groundwork and sort of um, showed you how to do the detective work to isolate probably what you don't know you don't know. Maybe as you go through these things over the course of the next few days, you discover something that you weren't aware of. And what's really cool about that is, you know, you could go get pills, you could go get shots, you could go have surgery, but that doesn't teach you anything about what's actually causing the problem. And so I'm a big fan of educating people with back, butt, and sciatic issues how to identify uh, the root cause of their symptoms. And if you're interested in working with me personally and having me review your case to see if we can help, just click the link below in the description to apply to work with us. We work with people all around the world dealing with, again, these issues. Um, and we can help you do even deeper detective work and help you identify what exercise or motion is going to be best for you. And the entire process will hold your hand A to Z. Click the link below to apply to work with us. Set up a time to chat and submit what we call a case review. Details of your specific case. I'll review your case personally. Thanks so much. And let me know in the comments, were these helpful? What tweaks or strategies did you find that made you feel same, better, or worse.